Welcome back to Love Fools News. You guys, we are going to get into this live White House briefing, see what they're talking about. I heard something about reparations, so let's get into it. And so we want to make sure that our commitment continues to be the advancement of racial equity. That's what we want to see, support for undeserved communities. Make sure, again, as some communities have been left out, um, we don't want to see that. We want to see, for example, an economy that's built from the bottom up, middle out. And we have seen some historic wealth gains from, for the black community. That's because of the actions that this administration has taken. And we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue anything that we're, look, we're moving forward uh, on. We want to make sure that not just black American community, but also all communities, uh, we want to make sure that we deliver uh, and don't leave anybody behind. But the study of reparations, we, be, we believe, uh, and we'll continue to say this, uh, is something for Congress uh, I just want to say I love her blouse. Like, I would 100% wear that. Yep. The website has added a new section on Taiwan independence punishment that encourages people to report Taiwan independent supporters. Some are calling it witch hunt. Does the administration agree? I mean, look, uh, our, our policy has not changed. Uh, it will continue to be that, the one China policy. Uh, we've heard of say this uh, many times. Uh, I can't speak to this new development uh, that, you're sp that you just laid out, uh, but our policy has not changed. We will continue to be consistent from here. Okay. Great. Pero, Thank yeah. you. The new Title IX went into effect last week, last Thursday. As you know, it's faced lots of lawsuits. Many governors say they're not going to even follow it. So there's that angle of it. But critics say the new Title IX hurts women and girls. For starters, they say it will destroy women's sports by allowing biological men to compete directly against women in sports. Does the president share that concern? So let me just say, uh, so there's still ongoing litigation, so I would have to refer you to DOJ, but more broadly, uh, every student deserves the right to feel safe. Every student deserves the right to feel safe in schools. Uh, that's what the rule is all about, strengthening and restoring vital protections uh, that the previous administration took away. And ending violence against women and girls has been a priority, a priority. Not that's not what he asked you about. And when you're speaking about violence against women's and women and girls, he's talking about you allowing men that describe themselves as transgender women to beat on and basically outdo women in sports in their sports area like they don't have the chromosomes of men you know what he's asking you that so i'm just going to leave it there how do you address the concerns that the new regulations the new title nine rewrite will allow men biological men into women's locker rooms look um i want to be again really careful here it's an ongoing litigation. I'm not going to say beyond, anything beyond that. Does the president have any concerns about this? Is he going to pull gonna, it? I've, is he going to pull it? That's a problem for me. That's a problem. Even at the Olympics, you guys just seen what happened in that UFC fight. You seen it yourself. <laughs> Tear your kingdom down. Does the president have an opinion on that statement? So, look, the president has always been very clear and very recently after uh, the assassination attempt of the last president about lowering rhetoric, right? Lowering political rhetoric and the importance of doing that. Uh, it is important, important that we uh, be very mindful of what we say. Uh, this kind of rhetoric is inflammatory and divisive and incredibly unhelpful. Uh, and uh, look, we're going to continue to condemn any type of political rhetoric in that way, in that vein. And so it is important to be mindful in what we say and how we say it, uh, but uh, we cannot. Did she literally just repeat herself? Discourse, not now, not ever. And quickly on the VP decision, you said a couple times that he spoke to the Vice President about her decision. 
I don't expect you to say what he counseled on. But did he give her advice? I appreciate advice? that. Thank you. <laughs> but did he give her? Did he say who he thought she ought to name as her vice president? So what I can say is, and he said this himself, that he had talked to her. Uh, I think like over a week ago when he was asked uh, about this particular uh, uh, VP decision, uh, the vice president sought the president's advice, and uh, and you know she certainly uh, welcomed the vice president. This is my problem today with voting for Kamala. You sought the advice from someone who we all have seen is not cogn cognitively stable in making decisions for himself, nevertheless, a whole entire country. But you asked him, she may have been talking about Barack. I, th I think that's what happened. She's talking about Barack. I, gotta, I know I gotta wrap up. Uh, go ahead, John. Thanks a lot, Karine. Can you just uh, clarify an answer that you gave a little bit earlier? Yeah. It involves that revocation of that plea deal for the 9-11 defendants, including Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Did the Secretary of Defense give a heads up to the President, the Commander-in-Chief? This is a Chief? decision that he made. That he made on his own. I understand. Can I just I think that answers question? the question. Well, it doesn't, because I want to know if... For if, you, if, maybe. But go ahead. Okay. I just simply wanted to know whether the Secretary of Defense gave a heads up to the commander in chief about his decision. This decision was made by the secretary. This was his decision to make. This is his decision to make. It was his, this was his decision to make. This is not something that we are involved in. The president, what I can say is the president has the full confidence of the secretary. It was his decision to make. I'm not doubting whether he has confidence or not in the secretary of defense. Just simply wanted to know, but I'll move on. Wanted okay. to ask you um, another question that just was out there on social media, and maybe sure. you can reply to it. The former president has made this suggestion that the current president may still want to be the Democratic presidential nominee. Put that out on social media. Does the president, I see your reaction, and that's why I want to ask you this. Does the president in any way lament his decision to drop out of the race? The president is proud of his decision. He's proud of his decision. Again, we had nothing to do with the 9-11 plea deal uh, reversal. We had nothing to do with it. This was something for the secretary to make, and he made it. The yeah, this guy, he's pushing it. She answered it from the beginning. She showed you you wouldn't get anything more, and he kept going. Of his decision. He's proud of his decision. Again, we had nothing to do with the 9-11 plea deal uh, reversal. We had nothing to do with it. This was something for the secretary to make, and he made it. The president has full confidence in the secretary. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. I'm not mad at it. It seems like she has definitely stepped into her role pretty well. She's adjusted well from the beginning when she, that first year was very rocky for her. But it seems like she's adjusted. She's definitely got control of the situation in that room. Um, I've seen when they first started, she was getting disrespected. She was getting called out in regards to being incompetent, not being able to properly answer the questions, not understanding the questions. But to me, it seems like she was on the ball. And she gave a little bit of information, not much as I would have liked to hear, especially about Title IX, because that is a really, really big deal about boys whether they they consider themselves to be transgender or not being in women's bathrooms being in women's sports um it's just something that is a safety issue it's something that if you're saying you want everyone to feel safe then make sure everyone feels safe and not just one side winning at that title nine um litigation is happening right now and bill that's being proposed it should not be one-sided where Oh, we're going to go with the making sure the transgenders feel included, but now the women feel unsafe and now we feel like no one's speaking up for us. So I will be following Title IX a bit more because I just want to see what direction they're going in. And I can probably almost guess what direction they're going to be going in because for some reason it's almost like the voices of the... And I, I promise you, I'm not about to say no sis, because I have up until 19, what was it, 1995 or 1994, that word did not exist. Natural born men and women 
is what I understand. And if you guys are not in the business of making sure natural born women are safe, along with making sure transgender women or boys are safe, I don't know what to tell you. It's almost like we're going to have to create a third bathroom option because or a, a sports lane for transgenders because you can't group them into a group of women or attach them into a group of women as if they are women when biologically they don't have the makeup of women regardless of how many estrogen pills are taken regardless of what surgery changes are made they are biological now are we going to erase the word biological and all of the research and different things that have been put into place with establishing what biological means so it, that's that's another conversation because it, it goes deeper because if this is the case we can't all come to an agreement create a lane create a sports category for trans women trans men to battle each other instead of crossing over into the lines so that's not either here nor there and i do not hate or dislike any group of people it's more so about making sure things are fair on all ends not one end Thanks for watching. Come back again.